Nails done. Hair done. Bags packed. We're ready to head to Barcelona. Elton, baby, we have a very, very, very long flight today, okay? Very long flight. Alright, we are here. We're at the airport. Ooh, it's so exciting. It's very early. I'm running on little sleep, so thank god I've got some caffeine. Got a tall chai tea latte with one shot of espresso with soy milk and no foam, aka a dirty chai tea latte. I'm very excited. I've not had a sip yet. Um, so we had a quick breakfast. Thank god I was so hungry. I had breakfast tacos and they were delicious. Now we have an hour and a half flight to Calgary, then a four hour layover, and then a 10 hour flight to Barcelona. Now we've been planning this for like six months. It has taken like six months of paperwork and phone calls and vet visits and so much whoopla to get that guy down there. He's down there, right? Oh, he's down there. <laughs> to be able to come to my brother's wedding. My brother is getting married in the south of France in 10 days so excited and so we wanted to go extra early because we don't want to be jet lagged okay it's a nine hour time difference and we want to be partying till 4 a.m with the rest of them i won't be i'll be going to bed but my parents will be up having fun and so um we figured we'd go a week early but we've all been to france multiple times and now that my brother lives there we'll be going there for the rest of our lives so we we're like let's do barcelona so we're going to barcelona for a week because i've always wanted to go since like 12 years ago when my like she was like a mentor to me growing up like a big sister she went there on her honeymoon and she told me all about how fabulous it was and I was like check Barcelona's in the mental checklist so so far this year we're checking off two places that have been on my list for like a decade or longer Japan and now Barcelona um, so yeah we're heading there and we could have gotten a straight through flight but the things you do when you travel with adorable guide doggies. Not only have we had to do six months of paperwork and phone calls, but we also decided we should do a layover. And at the layover, he can stretch his legs, he can get out and go to the bathroom. And that way I can get him out to the bathroom like right before we get on the plane because he refuses to go at the airport bathrooms. It's very annoying. So we literally will have to leave the airport, take him for a nice big walk, check in through security again and then get on the flight. So that's what we're doing. This will be his longest flight yet. Though I will tell you, in the almost year we've been together, yes, almost a year, we're at month 11, um, he's gotten so good at planes, hasn't he? Oh yeah, so Just good. Just better and better and better. Yeah, he's so good. But his longest is still only six hours. <laughs> so we thought 12, doubling it, was a bit overzealous. So 10 seems like slightly more reasonable. So yes, we're doing this for him. What else are we doing for you? Okay, we've packed all the dog food in our carry-on that he'll need for the flight, which is three meals. It's a long travel day. We've packed a bowl of water and we will monitor his water intake. So when I travel for very long flights with my guide dogs, I never let them free drink. I never let them just drink as much as they want. Um, I give them small amounts relatively frequently so they're hydrated but never have to have like an urgent pee. Um, we've also brought sedatives from the vet in case he just gets really restless and uncomfortable. Uh, of course we'll be getting him up to move him and walk him. Um, that's all I can think of for now. So. Those are the, the steps we've taken to hopefully make this as comfortable as possible for Elton. Oh, and we also booked premium economy, um, so that way he has more space because frankly at this point he just doesn't fit. They're making the economy smaller and smaller and he just doesn't fit. So we're in premium economy, so he'll have a bit more room and that's that. Wish us luck, pray for him. Good luck, buddy. You could do this. I believe in you. You could do it. We're on the plane, ready to go for our first leg of the flight. And oh my god, look how much room we have. He's so comfy down there, he has so much space. So I don't think it'll be like quite this spacious on the long haul from Calgary to Barcelona, but keep your fingers crossed. Keep your toes, your paws, everything crossed, right? He looks so comfy down there. He's so comfy. Elton John is currently eating his dinner a little bit early in the hopes that it'll stimulate a pool. So we walked around the airport for quite a bit, stretched his legs, we sat and grabbed a kale quinoa salad, like just something fresh, light, healthy before getting on a long flight. And now we are gonna get ready to take him out. We gave him some water as soon as we got off, that way it's 
had time to work its way through a system before we take them out. What we're gonna do is we're gonna leave the bags here with my mom and then my dad and I are gonna exit the airport through baggage claim, take them for a walk, hopefully he'll poop and pee. Then my dad and I will have to go back through security, but with no baggage or anything, it should be pretty quick. And uh, take this big man on his first long overseas flight. All right, friends, we've made it to the flight. We have got a glass of champagne in hand, the perfect way to start a flight. Um, so we're in like premium economy, so it's not the first class, but there's more leg room. The seats get to recline a little more. Um, the leg thing like comes up a little bit. Uh, you get like, I think slightly fancier meals maybe. Um, and like some nice amenities when you get on like really good proper headphones and uh, stuff like that. But truly, we are only doing this for Elton John. And we really lucked out because we were supposed to be in one of the window seats and it would just be me in the window with Elton at my feet and then my mom next to me. But the woman saw how big he was on my record and actually moved us before we got on because there was some empty space. So my mom and I got a row of three with an empty one in the middle. So Elton has even more room, which makes me so happy for his longest flight ever. It is a 10 hour flight um, or maybe even a little over 10 hours. So I'm feeling much happier for his sake. Um, he was able to get out, he had a poop, he had a pee, it was a little chaotic, just like the weather. It was so cold and rainy, and we kept getting lost, but we had plenty of time, we got back to security, no problem. And overall, doing this would have shaved four hours off of how long he would have had to hold his pee, and gave him much more time to exercise. However, um, we were an hour delayed, but um, overall I, I still think I'm happy with this choice, and we'll see how Elton well John does. Got my cozy blankie ready for the flight, and I'm gonna be watching lots of shows. Oh, I I downloaded on Netflix um, "Take Care of Maya," I think it's called. Taking care of Maya. I'm really interested. I think from the trailer I saw, it might be about a mom who had. Um, oh my God, why am I blanking on the name? Proxy. Munchausen by proxy, which is what my mom has. That's why I'm blind. <laughs> I love when I read hate comments like that. I think they're yeah. hilarious. Ooh, she has, she has Munchausen. She has Munchausen by proxy here. I'm like, that's not how RP works, sweetie. Nice try, though. I'm trying to decide between the butternut squash ravioli or the beef for dinner. There's also a salmon, but my stomach and salmon, it's a dicey. Even though you dicey. love it. Like I love it, but like 80 to 90% of the time that I eat it, I get sick. So yeah. it evidently does not like me. Um, anyways. Long haul flights, my friends. I always bring this. It has my toothbrush, my toothpaste, my floss, my makeup remover, a little bit of uh, like, a, like a moisturizer, lip balm, Advil, anti nausea medication. I've got a hair tie, every lip balm, everything you can imagine that I will need to be comfortable on a long overhead flight. It's in this sucker. Here we're seeing some B roll of the plane ride. We have the little screen that they show you on the plane where you can see where on the globe your plane is, which is very fun. We have a very happy Elton John with his big pink tongue sticking out, Molly sleeping on the plane. Then they land and we see Molly walking with Elton to the car in Spain. We see some footage out the car window as they drive to their hotel, some of the beautiful Spanish architecture. It's so stunning. I don't even know how to put it to words. Such a beautiful city. Now we're seeing the view from their hotel balcony, gorgeous, and we have some footage of the hotel room. It's very earth-toned, browns and grays. The bathroom is stunning. There's a big bathtub that looks like the one Molly has in her place in BC. There's brick, exposed brick on the walls, a big queen bed in the center, very gorgeous, cozy hotel room. Okay, Elton and I are home now, but before I go on, I just realized I never told you guys how well he did. He did so well on the flight. Very proud of you. Good boy. Like, it really wasn't a bother to him to the point where I would actually consider next time I go to Europe just doing a direct flight because he did that well. I never had to give him the sedative. He was fantastic. Not a bother on him. Even when we got out of the airport, like, he had a big bowl of water. And then when we got out of the airport, he was like, no, I'll just hold my pee till we get to the hotel. Like, I was like, okay. Sure, like gave him an opportunity. He's like, no, nah, I'm fine. I was like, wow. 
He stretched his legs multiple times throughout the flight. Um, we brought him back to have his dinner. The air hostesses were on flight attendants were all like incredible, so kind and sweet. And also take care of Maya, shocking, okay? I don't wanna ruin it, but it's very emotional. It's very shocking. It's very upsetting, but definitely absolutely worth the watch. I watched it on the flight. The way they advertised it made it seem like it was like a Munchausen by proxy situation, which I guess that's kind of what they were accusing them of. Anyways, I don't wanna ruin it, but please, definitely check that out. I feel like a lot of the disabled, chronically ill folks who watch me will resonate with that. It's shocking. Okay, back to Molly in Spain. Hello, it is our second full day here in Barcelona. Day one was basically my parents being jet lagged and taking a nap while I sat and watched Netflix. And then the second day, <laughs> I was just like, yeah, that was basically exactly what happened. <laughs> and then um, we like grabbed a drink and snack on the rooftop, walked around and went to bed early. Um, then we all were super like not sleeping well that night. Um, I got the best sleep. I slept for like six hours, but then woke up at like 3.40 a.m. because Elton John was jet lagged and he woke me up and I couldn't fall back to sleep. So um, yesterday we had a whole busy day. We shot a full video with my friend Ignazi, which you guys will be seeing in the future. Um, but my mom was like a literal zombie with the poor thing. I felt so bad. Oh, she so like, bad. A literal zombie. She kept saying merci to thank people. It was hysterical. <laughs> um, and I'm sure they were like, does she think that's Spanish? Oh, I thought they probably didn't even understand it, to be honest, the way I said it. She, it was very funny. Um, she was half asleep the whole day. She, I was like, she, she was. I would just kept falling asleep. She was filming an interview with my friend and I, and I could hear her snoring on the couch. <laughs> <laughs> I'd wake up every ten minutes and put the uh, camera on again. It was so funny. Anyways, so that was yesterday. Um, then we we all managed to stay up late. My my mom and dad had a nap, and I went out for ice cream with my friend. I stayed awake the whole day like a damn trooper. I was awake for almost twenty four hours by the time I got to sleep last night. Slept like a log for seven hours, and then we woke up all in the correct time zone. Everybody had a great night's sleep, especially me, Burke. Mm -hmm. I accidentally turned like all of the lights on in the hotel room because the light switches are just weird. And I was like, oh shoot, she's still sleeping. <sighs> she's <just> <laughs> Never all noticed. the lights on were in the bedroom. And I was like, well, I guess I don't have to turn them off. Like, So she, she slept like a log, so we're all feeling much better today. We had a delicious breakfast. I'll have to show you guys the breakfast here tomorrow. It's so good. It's a rooftop poolside patio with at, like Fantastic at the hotel food. and the breakfast is included and is the best hotel included breakfast I've ever had delish um yeah today we're going shopping <laughs> surprise surprise Molly wanted to go shopping so obviously yes I want to hit up Zara because it's from Spain and I also want to see a Zara home because I've like never heard of that before I don't know if I'm just not in the loop or if we don't have it in America. Um, and then I definitely want to do like local boutiques, like try to find local shopping area where it's stores that we don't have, which gets increasingly difficult the more and more chains just spread throughout the world. So I want to try to find some local boutiques and my dad and mom need to get some hats for my brother's wedding. They didn't want to like buy like those kind of straw hats and stuff and get them crushed in the luggage so we figured we'd buy them here so we're gonna go to a nice local hat shop and that's our plan for the day i'm feeling cute i'm comfy I've got a little baseball hat on from uh free people movement I'm a little brown paper bag little lace free people movement outfit and then just some comfy shoes platform vans to walk around the city and that's the look. And we're gonna bring some little booties for Elton John in case his feetsies get hot. Got a collapsible water bowl for him. Right, Elty? Elty done? He slept like a log. You slept almost as well as your grandmother did, didn't you? <laughs> yes, you slept yeah, so well. Yeah, the two well. of us are on the same timetable, aren't we? Yeah. yeah. He says, I'm very jet lagged, but I'm feeling good. <laughs> okay, so we went to Zara home, who killed it. Like, everything was so aesthetic. I don't know why we don't have that in North America. Zara, we're begging you, bring it, bring it. So well priced. Everything was so nice, so my style, so my vibe. I would have bought so much, but I cannot lug a bunch of, you know, dishes and linens home. Um, but I did get Elton John a dog toy, which he's very thrilled about. The pet section, adorable. Um, then we went to the hat shop. They bought hats. I did not. And now we're here for lunch. And there was a ham and cheese sandwich, a homemade lemonade, and some french fries. How Spanish of me. This is actually 
the least Spanish meal we've gotten thus far. Like every other meal we've gotten has been like very classic Spanish food. So I don't know why this is the first meal I'm showing you, but we need to eat, you know? Okay, so what you're about to see on the screen, for those who can see it anyways, is a bunch of fireworks. And I realized I didn't explain what this is. So on, I think it was like our third night there, I want to say, maybe fourth, but I think third, there was this huge celebration, this big like holiday in Barcelona. I think it's all across Spain. Um, and I'm not sure if they do this everywhere in Spain, but in Barcelona, they just like light fireworks all through the city it's this huge celebration my mom and dad went and like walked around and had a rooftop cocktail and watched the fireworks i would have loved to because i can see fireworks i can't see the colors but i can see like some of the flashes particularly the big bright ones and i do love them but i was feeling very unwell that night so elton and i stayed in and i just went to sleep early though i could hear like all the banging and booming outside the hotel but yeah that's what you're seeing on the screen really really cool um really beautiful apparently they used to also like light fire like like chairs and books and stuff on fire in the middle of the streets but i don't think they go quite that crazy anymore it is our third full day here and we are up early getting at it we have a long day planned ahead i'm super excited mostly for this breakfast the breakfast is so good and i'm not a breakfast girl you guys know that so for me to say that you know it's really good so you can either order from the menu or go to the buffet or do a mix of both we usually do a mix of both so here i have a bunch of fruit nuts and then there's like this raspberry compote that's like literally just real raspberries it's so good and the yogurts come in these like glass jars we put some raspberry compote in already to make it like a raspberry yogurt it's unbelievable i what i hate about yogurt in north america is like the gelatiny texture i can't stand it so i basically never eat yogurt unless it's the trader joe's goat yogurt but this i would eat it every day and then i've ordered a cold pressed green juice though the ginger one is also phenomenal um and i ordered an eight you know what, green juice has arrived, which I promptly spilled and a little bit got on Elton John's head. So he's not <laughs> pleased about that since he just got groomy groomy. The latte has arrived, soy latte, most important part of breakfast. And I'm obsessed with their sugar packets. I put one pack of brown sugar in mine and either end is perforated. So it actually doesn't matter which end you pull from, both work and it opens so easily. Yesterday I dumped the entire thing, including the plastic into my uh, coffee so glad I didn't do that today okay so now I got this Asian rice bowl for breakfast I love places that have non breakfast items on the breakfast menu I mean it does have eggs so it is breakfasty but it's so good so it's like this omelet on top of rice and then it comes with this Asian dressing that you pour over top is it coming out mm -hmm. delish and my mom got the halloumi which I got yesterday it's so delicious and my dad got a spanish omelet which is an omelet that has potato in it and as an irish potato lover i fully approve bon appetit molly all right we finished breakfast and we literally just walked a block from our hotel and we're going to a famous gaudi building i don't know i don't know things what is it called down la pedrera huh la pedrera la pedrera um so that's where we're going blind girl we're going to see architecture Ooh. <laughs> Elton's all excited. Are you excited? Yeah. <laughs> they have... <Sorry. laughs> Fill in the blank. They have... Audio description. Great. No. English audio description would be audio great. Description. It's so textural. This is so cool. This was someone's house. This is a spectacular house. It's really cool. I'm feeling like all the different things and it's so interesting. This door handle is so cool. <coughs> so the audio description isn't just giving me descriptions of visuals, it's also telling me what things I'm allowed to touch and giving me like directional instructions. So it's telling me take 10 steps forward then turn to your left, there'll be a railing on your right hand side that you can trail along to get to the next room, which is this room. So it's really interesting, it's combining like visual descriptions with directional descriptions. I love touching everything. Like, this door frame is so sculptural. The door knob is so sculptural. It's all 
so interesting to feel. Look, they also have this entire tactile map of the full building with braille that outlines where everything is. Of course, it's Spanish braille, so I can't actually read it, but it's cool to be able to, so I was reading the word. <laughs> I mean, confirmed, I don't know what it says. I, I mean, it's B-O-T-I-G-A, I don't know. Anyways, um, but yeah, it's really cool so I can feel it and get more of a visual representation in my mind of what it looks like. Okay, this is cool. The audio description is now describing the tactile map. So it's telling me what I'm feeling. So it describes the different textures and what those textures represent. So for example, there's a cylinder here with stripes and those are skylights and stairwells. My only complaint about this audio description device is that there's no screen reader on it and you do have to flip between different pages so you do, do still require help from a sighted person. So that's my one and only complaint about this experience as a blind person. They have a speaker up here that's making these sound effects that almost sound like the sea. It's a very multi-sensory experience and I'm obsessed with these archways and when you walk under them the, the sound changes of your own voice so you can like hear the arch. Okay, so this I was supposed to feel at the beginning, but for some reason we like never found it until the end, which sucks. But it's this like wooden sculpture of the entire outside facade, so I can feel what the outside of the building looks like. And what I'm saying, it would have been really helpful because here on the rooftop, for example, there's all those stairs, and I can feel where the little stairs are versus where the big stairs are, where the flat areas are. I also love that all of these chimneys are different. So this one, the lines go straight up and down. This one, they are wavy. And then this one's like a different type of spiral. Like it's, it's so cool. Oh, and then this one is almost like spiky. It's incredible. And you can tell like the outside is all wavy. This is crazy. Yes. It almost feels naturally occurring. And this is the courtyard. Feel all the windows. Oh, there's multiple courtyards. This is huge. But now we have a middle of the door to the It's incredible. I have a here. The door again. Can you feel again? No. It's like I have no words. It's spectacular. <laughs> Something I've noticed, at least about the area of Barcelona that our hotel is in, is that the sidewalks are super wide, so it makes it really easy to walk, even with tons of pedestrians. And the slopes at all the crosswalks are very consistent. It's not like the curb cut that we have in North America that's very inconsistent, number one, and like almost like a scoop out of the sidewalk. This is like a slant that's built in. They've carved out a triangle slant. Um, it's really smooth, it's really consistent, really wide, which is awesome, and I love it. Also, similar to what we saw in Japan, they have a lot of the tactile markings carved into the sidewalks that cane users can follow. Here's some footage of the bus tour they took through Spain. Once again, we're seeing some more of this stunning Spanish architecture. There's also a beachy town. Stunning. We're coming to the end of our two and a half hour bus tour and it's been so fun. I've loved it. Croquettes have become uh, uh, my new favorite food find. They are basically on every single menu in Barcelona, and for good reason. They are so delicious. So if you ever come, you have to get croquettes. Of course, we've had some great paella, and now I'm having some sangria, another classic, and then this delicious fresh salad. Okay, so we've come to Gaudi's Park Güell. I've probably butchered that, so my apologies. It's like unbelievable. I have never been to a more fantastic park. It is mind-blowing and apparently so is the view for the sighted folk. So we wanted to give you a little opportunity to see that if you can. It's beautiful. It's so cool. I know. It's so I wish tactile. everywhere looked like Gaudi designed it. The thing about architecture is people could describe Gaudi's work to me, but until I've come and touched it, I could have never conceptualized it in my mind. The way sighted people can when they just look at a picture. They don't need to go somewhere to get the full idea. Um, going there gives you a better, a better idea, a better feel for the vibe, but you can understand the concept without visiting it, whereas I cannot. Does he like it? It's really nice breeze. <laughs> it's cool marble floor, it's very nice. <laughs> oh. <laughs> he never bars. Never. 
So it's way too hot outside for Elton today and we obviously don't want to risk heat stroke so he's having the day off work. He's hanging out in the nice air conditioned hotel room and just going out for little piddles. So we're giving him his toy we bought at Zara Home, right? He's having a lot of fun. Mm, <laughs> a lot of fun. <laughs> Okay, it's our last full day in Spain. I feel like I have not been vlogging that much. Honestly, it's been a rough few days. I have a very, very severe period right now. Like the roughest I've had in I don't even know how long. So that's taken me down, okay? Um, also, it's very hot. So Elton hasn't really been able to work much. He's mostly been hanging out in the hotel room um, and then just coming to little things with me that are indoors. So he's not here right now, but we're at the beach for like an hour, an hour and a half, because we have such a long day. We got up extra early though, because we want to just spend a little time at the beach. So my mom and I have been enjoying that while Elton and my dad are back at the hotel hanging out. Um, and we got a twister pop. Is that what it's called? Twi super twister. A super twister. Yeah. I had these in Ireland and England, but I haven't had one for a really long time. So I'm excited to give it a try. I don't know if it's going to be the same as I remember, but... That's what it looks it like. It looks delicious. The one I usually have is the one that's green and white. But my mom said this one's like yellow and orange or something. Oh, wow. Mm. Very fruity. So I just got out of the shower to wash the beach off of me. And like turned the shower off. But you might notice it's on. And that's because like three to five minutes after I got out of the shower, it just turned itself back on. So evidently we have a ghost. I did not let on in this vlog how bad my period was and how difficult this trip actually was for me. Yes, I did have a lot of fun, um, particularly seeing my friend Ignazi, who you will be seeing in a video in August, as well as meeting the absolute angel Marta, uh, which you might have seen in these two videos. But outside of that, I actually had a really, really difficult trip. My PMS and my period was so bad. Um, Elton could hardly work because the heat was so, so, so high. Um, so overall, for those two reasons, this was a really draining trip for me. And I realized I didn't properly finish this video. Um, I'm really happy that I went to Barcelona. It's such an incredibly beautiful place. And I would love to go back, especially since I do have now two friends in Barcelona, Ignasi and Marta and her beautiful husband, David. Um, so I'd love to go back, hopefully in like a better frame of mind and not in such a high heat time so Elton can actually enjoy the trip as well. Thank God our hotel had AC or I don't know honestly what we would have done. Um, but you know what, like that's the reality is, you know, when you're a uter uterus owner, some months are harder than others and this was a particularly tough one for me. And when you're a service dog user, things don't always go well. Sometimes your dog gets sick unexpectedly. Sometimes challenges come up that you don't expect. And I wanna just be transparent about that because you don't get to plan life. Life plans for you, right? So as much as I would have hoped to have had the best time ever in Barcelona, I made the best of what was actually a really difficult situation. And you know, sometimes that's at a wedding. Sometimes that's on a dream vacation. Sometimes that's the first week of your new job. We don't plan when life happens. All you can do is figure out how to best react to it and make the best out of it. So I did want to share that. And one of the other best things I made out of it was this handbag. This was my only purchase outside of the dog toy for Elton at Zara Home. Um, I didn't do much shopping because again, I just wasn't uh, really up for it, but I did spoil myself a little bit with this treat. Lueve is really one of the only like major designer brands that comes out of Spain. Most designers I feel like are like French and Italian, um, but Lueve is so beautiful. I've never owned anything from Lueve, but I've lost it after many. Uh, their, their work is just incredible. And I picked up this bag. This is like the wrist pouch. Uh, you can like literally wear, it's like the bracelet pouch, I think. You can literally like wear it as a bracelet. Um, but you can also do shoulder or crossbody. I mostly do crossbody. This has become my new everyday bag. Between this and my Prada nylon that you guys see me wear all the time, these are like my go-to. It's just so relaxed, which is really, I'm a casual bag girl. I don't like super structured handbags. I just love the relaxed vibe. I love the textured pleated nature of it. I love that it's like a really beautiful neutral color that I could wear really any season. Um, I love the ends of the bag, like the little 
um, embossed emblem on it. I love the way it just sits on my body. Being petite, a lot of crossbodies honestly don't work on me, um, especially if they don't have an adjustable strap. So this one just fits me and hugs my body perfectly and I adore it. And it is like a nice positive memory of the trip along with meeting Marta. If you haven't seen that video yet, please, please, please do. Honestly, both videos are worth the watch. I just think she's such an inspiration and an incredible person that everybody needs to know about. So if you want to check that out, click right here for episode one with her or over here for episode two. And I will see you next time when we go to France for my brother's wedding coming soon. Love you guys. Bye.